Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Mindless Horror Podcast. It is, uh, it feels like it's been a while, but it's not. No, it hasn't been a while. We just haven't been uploading. No. Well, I mean, we have, but I, I think I spent a lot of the majority of those two weeks t editing the TLAV one. Yeah. Um, but Our work and dedication to come out with a good video, right? This week was back-to-back, -back, so I mean... Back to back, like Drake and Heath Mill. So if you watched yesterday's podcast uh, that we put up, we talked a little bit about us and some other stuff that uh, was around. I don't remember what we talked about. I don't even. I never. Know I'm kind of like fresh off a nap, by the way. So that that's one of the case. But I'm fresh, fresh out, out of work. work. So it's Friday. Friday. If as we're just recording, um, got a. I, I think hopefully I probably put up the I like scary movie stuff, but we'll see. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm excited, excited for that tomorrow. That's, that's tomorrow, tomorrow, so we haven't known. We don't yeah, know what's but, up, but I hope you enjoyed the footage that's up. Yeah, just, just so you guys know, know what we're going to talk about today. We got Pet Cemetery on top, and maybe we can talk about our like scary movies. What do we expect? Pet Cemetery, of course, and I'm very excited to uh, talk a little bit about Pet Cemetery. Um, this is going to be kind of hard, though, because neither of us have seen the original. Nope. So we have nothing to compare it to. Which is good. Let's not compare it. Yeah, I guess I guess that's a good way to start because a lot of what I've been seeing as reviews go is they've been comparing it and stuff like that. I thought the movie was good. I thought it was good too. I mean, I have my critiques, but I thought it was good overall. Like it, it kept me captivated the entire movie. Yeah, because I remember I look over at you and you were just kind of like always on guard and stuff like that. And it's one of those things where it was like, that's why this movie should have made you feel. Like, you were constantly just waiting for something to happen. Yeah, I was waiting every single second, and the score just kept me waiting. The score was amazing, and I think a lot of what this movie was was jump scares. Yeah, no, definitely. It was jump scare after jump scare. Or even if it wasn't jump scare, even if it wasn't a jump scare, it was just something kind of, like, weird. To look at. Yeah, something weird and, and stuff like that. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about the movie. Uh, spoilers, by the way, if you guys have not seen Pet Cemetery yet. It's been out for about two or three weeks now. Highly yeah, suggest it's been a while. Go, yeah, highly <laughs> suggest you guys go see it, but we're going to talk a little bit spoilers about it, about some character uh, plots, um, just the plot of the movie in general, uh, what we thought about the movie, um, and if they can do another se like sequels like how they did uh, in the past. Because I know they think, I think they did like three or four. I know they did two. two. I know they did two. two. Yeah. They probably did more. Probably. But the other ones were not based off a book. They were just an original idea. And this one is based off a book, Stephen King's uh, uh, book, of course, Pet Cemetery. Um, fun fact, actually, I had heard that almost all of Stephen King's books are actually in pre-production, production, production or in somewhat of a production for movies. Which is super cool, because obviously Stephen King is a renowned author. Yeah, horror, he's like one of the horror masters and stuff like that. Yeah. But I will say this, and this kind of reflects to the end of the movie, that, and I was telling you after we watched the movie, Stephen King likes to suck people in, and then at the very end, he said, he said it himself, he goes, I like to suck people in, get people really into the movie, and at the end, I can do whatever I want. And usually, whatever he wanted is to fuck people over. Oh no, definitely, definitely yeah, guys. No, I definitely agree. See, See but like, when it comes, comes to the ending, like, I'm not a fan of the ending. Like, yeah, I know, I know we're gonna probably go through, through the movie bit by bit, but I'm such not a fan of the ending. Yeah, yeah. the ending was kind of whatever. But we'll start from the beginning. Yeah. Um, so this is a, this is about a family, of course, who uh, moves out into the country. The Creeds. The Creeds. You got the names up, don't you? I did. Good I looking out. Good like, looking uh, out. <laughs> Good looking out. Uh, so we got a, we got the Creed family who moves out into the country. Uh, the dad. What's the dad's name? The dad's name is uh, Louis or Louis or something. Louis. It's L O U I S. Luis. I never know how to pronounce that name. Probably, Probably Louis. So we'll just call him Louis. Yeah. Louis Creed is um, a doctor who actually moves away from the city because you know he was working a lot and he needed to see his family, so they moved out so he can work less. Yeah. He can see his family at nights and stuff like that, uh, along with his wife, who is 
the wife is uh, Rachel. 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 Rachel Creed. Uh, Rachel. 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 Uh, Rachel and uh, Louie try to uh, they move out uh, they come to the country uh, from the get go though you can tell the kids are just not feeling it well I, I, I think it's just, just kind of, of they're kind, they, they don't, don't know what they're going into they're basically like what I remember from what I remember it's like they get out of the car and it's like the movie's already put everything in yeah so, so it's kind of like I, like at least in my opinion like when I moved I moved a lot yeah it's kind of a little bit of fun and like putting your stuff like where you want it and things like that. Yeah. And obviously, you probably they probably move things around after the movers put things in, but like I feel like it's kind of like it makes it your home when you're like, okay, I want my books here and I want my bed here. And yeah. Things like that. Yeah, 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 I get you. Um, so then we see, of course, the, you know, they're trying to get adjusted to this new house and stuff like that. Um. And we get the, the big rig coming by. The big, yeah, yeah, the, the big, big rig comes big. by. That comes by a couple times in the movie, actually. Yeah, but it comes by like really early. Yeah. Jump, yeah, yeah, just for jump scares. It kind of shows you this highway is dangerous, which is kind of a benefactor that you'll see later on in the movie. And yeah, and obviously the trailer does a great job of just spoiling the entire movie. Yeah, they, they legit showed, uh, and again, spoilers, but they legit showed the daughter die early on in the trailer, and that's not until like almost the end of the movie. Yeah, which, which really pissed me off. I was like, I really want more of her... Of her uh, demonic yeah. south and yeah. stuff like that. So, uh, as we see, we start learning about more of their property and stuff like that. They ask the uh, the old man whose name is... His name is Judd. Judd. Yeah. So they ask Judd about the property a little bit, and... Um, you know, he tells them there's, there's so well, this is some. Don't they see the people like with the little? They see the kids, kids yeah, with the little taking money. taking I guess the dog to the pet cemetery yeah. to bury him. And uh, later on in the movie, Judd does explain that um, you know, if you want to bury your your loved ones here at rest, you bury them here. But if you want to if you want to bury them and you want results of something coming back, you take them beyond. He says that later on in the movie. Yeah. Um, Which is weird because like I think when they go out to the cemetery, like you see like the little like barrier. Yeah, you see the barrier. That's yeah. that's the barrier. That's supposed to be the symbolic barrier of the living and the dead. Yeah. So um, I like kind of that how they did that symbolically. Yeah. Um, but the cemetery and all, even when they go beyond it, I mean, but before even be the, the pet cemetery just looks creepy as it is. Well, I mean, it's kind of creepy, creepy that people are wearing masks as they go to bury their dead. Like. Yeah, uh, they they do explain that they 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 beat the drum and everything. It's like a ritual they've been doing for years and yeah. stuff like that. Uh, you, you come to find out, I don't think they really say it, but um, the pet cemetery is actually uh, built over an ancient uh, India burial ground that where they were studying like you know satanic stuff. Yeah. And you do see a lot of those symbols when they go beyond the pet cemetery uh, in the in the like the. The force that brings people back to life. Yeah, the, the force, force is super creepy. creepy. The, the force is really creepy. They did a bit, and I remember talking to you about this in the theater that they did an amazing job with the set design of this forest. Oh no, definitely. It, it looks so amazing so and stuff like that. Um, but the first time we see an encounter of the pet cemetery uh, is, of course, when we see those kids, and then um, Louis and the daughter they go and follow along to see what's going on, yeah. and you know Judd. Uh, at one point, the girl goes and wanders alone to see yeah, what's going on. Yeah, with the mom and her like alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Judd actually stops her from climbing over the barrier of the yeah. of the where the where it's evil and stuff like that. Um, but the first time we actually see someone come back to life or some you know something is actually the cat Church, yeah. uh, who's actually famous in this story because Church is obviously their cat, and you know that you see in the beginning of this movie how much love they have for this cat, how much. Um, sympathy they have for this cat it's a big part of the family and stuff like that yeah churchill winston churchill yeah, yeah they do mention that it's actually short for winston churchill but they just call him church yeah. um and then that's when you start to see of course uh you know the, the cat ends up dying judd brings uh lou out one day saying you know i found the cat like this yeah it's halloween it's halloween yeah so he, they're trying to hide it from uh you know the little girl and of course um you know the the kids of course <laughs> because they don't want to Make sure, they don't want to tell him, you know. Yeah, they don't want to scare them. Right? They don't want to scare him. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Judd tells him, "We'll we'll take care of this later on tonight." Well, we have to do it tonight. We, we have, have to do, do it tonight. tonight. Yeah, and that's and he's very specific on that. Yeah. Which does, it, does that ever explain? Well, well remember that, that was, was I think because it's a ritual as to they and in order to bring someone back to life, you have to do it at a certain time. Which makes a lot of sense because every time they've gone past the pet cemetery, it was at night. It was always at like midnight or something. Yeah. So I mean, and either that or the witching hour, which would make a lot of sense. Three a.m. Exactly. exactly. So that makes a lot of sense, especially if they're working with demonic stuff. Definitely. But 
then we see they take church to the they they go beyond the barrier and you start seeing this like whole forest it just looks creepy super creepy you got all the noises you got the symbols on the trees yeah fog out of nowhere fog out of nowhere it's just insane but, uh, water, and there's like bones in the water. Like it's really creepy. Yeah, it's just it's insane. So uh, we start seeing like, of course, all this stuff going on. Uh, they end up burying the cat, and he goes, "That's it." And then, which is also I think is weird, is that Judge doesn't help him at all when he buries the cat. No, which they do explain in the movie that you have to do it yourself in order you yeah. want it back. You have to bury him with the sand and everything a certain way and everything. Yeah. So we end up seeing that uh, they ha they eventually tell the daughter about church. And that's when the daughter goes, well, no, church has been here the entire time. Yeah. And that's when you're just like, what is going on? Uh -oh. so, so we see, we end up seeing church and church is actually not him himself anymore. He's uh, everything that he was not before. Exactly. Well, everything he was. So, so, what, the pet, is gone. so what, the, what the pet cemetery does to you is when you bury someone or something into it, they don't come back themselves. Their souls are gone, but they come back possessed in a way. Yeah. And that's what I that's what I took from this movie is they come back possessed because they're pretty much dead, but they're not themselves. And what had happened was when Church came back, uh, you know, he was just an evil cat. He was just a dick. Yeah. I, I I remember looking at you. I'm like, I'm gonna kill this cat. If yeah. no one does, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, he he comes back and he he's just not himself, but. Then we end up, uh, you know, finding out some more stuff about it, and the daughter doesn't want anything to do with the cat and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's when she goes and visits uh, Mr. Judd. Judd, yeah, she becomes, like, Judd's one of Judd's best friends or something like that in this movie, which I thought was kind <laughs> of weird. lonely, that's why. Yeah, Judd, Judd is, is lonely, lonely so. so. We end up seeing that, and then uh, it, it, it comes down to her birthday party. So she's turning, I think, like, 9 or 10, and, you know, Judd's like, you know, happy birthday and all that and stuff like that and the parents are celebrating her party and stuff and she's a little sad about uh something i forgot but she's sad about something and she you know the dad louis was like you can open a present and stuff like that and oh yeah she's sad because church went missing again that's because remember louis and and louis took church and just drove him far away and abandoned him oh yeah yeah because he was like we didn't even this. yeah because yeah, yeah. the cat was just doing a lot of evil he was and, like beating people up yeah, yeah so they got rid of the cat but then church ends up finding his way home and lure, lures the little girl out into the middle of the road where we end up seeing, of course, the truck hit the girl and ended up ultimately killing her. Um, after that, we uh, we see that, you know, the parents are devastated. They're all in shock and stuff like that. The little girl died um, and stuff, and they have the funeral for her and stuff like that. This actually drives Louie and Rachel to kind of go, uh, they're not themselves. They get really depressed, and, you know, Rachel can't stay in the house because it reminds her too much of her daughter. And so she takes her son, and they end up going to uh, Rachel's parents' house. Yeah. Um, another benefactor we're actually leaving out in this movie, which is a huge benefactor in this movie, is Zelda. That was the girl with the deform deformity of the bones and everything. Oh, was that her name? Yeah, yeah, that was her name. Her name is Zelda. She's actually a major part in this story. Oh, yeah, because she's, like, tormenting the mom. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's, that's Rachel's sister, and she feels traumatized that she didn't do her job as to feeding her sister. And oh, so, I don't know if I would have If that was my sister, I would have been low-key scared. Yeah, yeah, and the sister throughout the entire movie, you keep saying, like, you, you, this should be happening to you, this is going to happen to you, and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, she's, like, witching it upon her sister. Yeah. But I think what had happened was um, she was supposed to feed her sister and go upstairs and stuff, but she was too scared to go upstairs because she was by herself. So she ends up putting the food into a trolley system, which is like a, one of those old elevators that goes up so you can deliver stuff and everything like that. Yeah. And what had happened was uh, the parents told her not to do that only because that thing's broken and that you know she can barely walk as it is and stuff like that, yeah. and it'd be a pain in the ass for her to get which we do end up finding out as she's trying to get her food she falls and dies and that's uh you she opens the thing and you know zelda's just right there dead and stuff like that which which is once again that is her fucking parents fault yeah, yeah that is you don't leave a little girl especially if she has a, a a freaking disease like that yeah just don't leave her by herself you don't leave her by herself and you don't leave like an eight-year-old it's like that yeah, yeah i mean they're already traumatized as it is and stuff like that yeah so. Um, but throughout the whole movie, Zelda is just taunting, you know, the pet cemetery is getting to them and Zelda is just taunting, uh, Rachel. Rachel is, uh, the fact that she basically killed her in a way and she's always thought of that as her fault. And I even remember, um, of course, Louis saying it's not your fault. You yeah. know, it, you, you, you were too young, you didn't know and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
but I think one of the some of the scariest scenes was seeing her because she just looked creepy. Oh yeah, like the way her back, her spine was. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I kind of like. She kind of looked a little bit like Linda Blair from The Exorcist in a way. Yeah, I'm sure that's what they were going for. Which, yeah, I mean, it makes sense because it's one of the most iconic, you know, horror movies, and just to kind of get inspiration yeah. from that. But uh, so we do end up seeing that, of course, uh, when she goes back home, she tries to call Lou again, saying like, you know, I want to come home. He's on the freeway. What do we see? Uh, one of the good best Easter eggs we do see is, uh, of course, an Easter egg to uh, where a majority of. Stephen King's books take place. They all take place in a in a in a town or a, you know a city or Maine state. state. It's, it's, it's in Maine. Yeah, um, that's, that's where they, where they take, take place. But on the street, on the freeway sign, we see it says Derry, like forty something miles away or something like that. Yeah. And so that's a little tribute to Derry, Maine, and stuff. Where of course the events of it take place. Best, Best Stephen King. King. Best, Best Stephen King. King. There you go. It Chapter Two coming out this year. Um, so that that's really cool uh, that they kind of nod that a uh, little Easter egg and stuff. Uh, that's supposed to be what Castle Rock's about too. It's supposed to be like all of his books coming to intertwining and stuff like that. The show. Oh, is that, is that true? I'm, yeah. I didn't see the show. I thought you were a big fan. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a really good show and. It, you know, the show, of course, starts off with them in Shawshank, and then it, it just goes from there, and it kind of mixes everything. Shawshank Redemption? Yeah, yeah that's, that's Stephen King book. I didn't know that. Stephen, Stephen King book, book. so. Um, I own that movie, but I've never opened it. I've never seen it either, but I, I, I want to. I just have, I just, my cousin just bought it for me on Voodoo, so that's pretty cool. I might check it out. Oh, okay. That's cool. So, uh, but yeah, um, so she's trying to get home and stuff, but at the same time, the dad, uh, while Rachel was gone, just couldn't take it anymore, and he buried his daughter into the pet cemetery. Also, dug her up. Dug her up. Carried her. Carried her, and then took her to the pet cemetery. Like, that's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. And, and then it, he ends up bringing her back. But I should remind you that, what was his name, Judd? He did remind her, remind him that they don't come back the same. Uh, yeah, because he knew what he was Wait, so, so do you think Judd brought his wife back? back? That's a good question because they don't really explain that in the movie. Like you know that her wife is his wife is dead, but like they don't really explain what had happened. Maybe he did have some experience with it because he knew he knew a lot of what that cemetery could do. He knew what that cemetery could do. He he was like, I've been to the same place. Yeah, I've done it. I think he might have. And he was based. I remember him talking. I'm like, I thought by bringing back your cat, it would be different. Yeah, and Wait, it's not. Well, remember he also did the same thing for his dog though. Oh, is that what it was for? Because he so talked, that's that's right, he he talked his about his dog, and he's like, when the when the it was the friendliest dog ever, but when he came back, he wasn't the same dog. Yeah. Um, he might have tried it with his wife. I don't know. They do they do hint at his wife a lot, and that's what I thought when we went into his house, because it was kind of a big secret when you went into his house that we were gonna see like his wife laying in a bed or something like that, you know? Oh Which yeah, been that interesting. Was so creepy. But uh, the, of course, the daughter comes back, and she is just evil. <laughs> she just looks evil. It's it's horrible. Yeah. And uh, when she comes back, she ends up doing a uh, you know a couple of things. Uh, she tries to reconnect with the dad and everything. She tries to you know just he tries to actually make her herself again. But it wasn't until the next morning where when she wakes up, she's doing like her ballet thing. That was another thing in this yeah. movie that you have to pay attention to. She was into like ballet and stuff like that. Yeah. So she's doing like her recital practice. Us. 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 There, there you go. go. She's doing like her recital practice inside the um, front room, but she's actually breaking shit. She's, she's breaking things, and she's back in her funeral dress. In her funeral room. dress, and so yeah. that's why when Luke comes down, he goes, "Why are you wearing that?" And then he he try he gets her to stop breaking stuff because she's going out of control. Yeah. Um, and that's when we, of course, come back to uh, you know Judd. He knocked him out the night before, so he wouldn't interrupt um, yeah. him burying her in the pet cemetery because you know Judd knew the repercussions, and he just didn't listen to him. He yeah. wanted to see for himself. He just missed his daughter, and he was about to do anything to get her back. Um, so then, yeah, when, yeah, yeah, when the mom comes home, uh, oh, no, before, before the judge goes over there, and yeah, the judge goes, goes over there, there and he goes, what did you do? And something like that, nothing. nothing. And then the, the daughter actually looks out him in the window, which is actually probably one of the best shots in the movie. Yeah, that was super good. Yeah. yeah like, like he turns around and she's like standing in the window yeah. and that's when you kind of know like, all right, game's on. So Judd actually runs home and grabs his, uh, I think he grabs his gun and stuff yeah. like that. And the, the little girl's already there. Which... It's curious to me, because I have a theory on how I think she got there quicker than him. How? I think she got through there through the basement. Basement? Because remember when they go back downstairs, like, that's where, like, kind of, like, Winston turns up? Yeah. So I think, like, that basement has, like, the power to, like, 
That's like some pass underneath or something. Probably pass, yeah. I don't think it has like tell. I don't think there's no teleportation or anything. It's probably a, a path or something. But uh, yeah, yeah, I, I could see that. But we do see, uh, of course, she goes in and she. We see one of the most cringiest parts of the movie when he cuts her, his uh, ankle. Yeah. His, what is it? The the back part of your ankle, which is just it's horrible. It's it was bad and stuff it's like super that. Super bad. And he tries to run out and get the gun, but ends up failing because uh, she stabs him to death, and that's yeah. the last of Judd that we see. Yeah, uh, she's just crazy. Who's yeah, just, yeah, she, she was, was insane. She was like the stab. Yeah, yeah, she, she was, was like, and she was very strong too. She was like in and turn. We, yeah, yeah, we, we saw, saw that. that. We, we saw that with um, at the end when she's carrying her mom to the pet cemetery, yeah. how strong she was. Yeah. So that's like another person. But uh, before that, remember we do see her transform her face into the the wife. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah because that's how she's like, oh, like she says a bunch of like really crazy things. Yeah, right? yeah, she's like, yeah, she's like, it's me or something like that, or she she tries to convince her and stuff like that, and Judge is not buying it. Oh no, because Judge knows better. Yeah, yeah Judge knows, knows better. better. And so uh, he, you know, he ends up killing Judd. Then we go back, and the mom comes home, yeah. and that's when we see the confrontation between the mom and the little girl at at one point, and he she goes kind of like. Uh, you know, she she's like kind of shocked as to what she's seen, and he, yeah. you know, he goes, "Go hug your daughter" and stuff like that, and she refuses to believe that that's her daughter. She's like, yeah. "This is not my daughter. It ain't, you know, this isn't her," and stuff like that. Then we come down to the point, of course, where uh, she realizes that the mom doesn't love her, so she's gonna try to kill the mom. Yeah. And so, so she, she what she, she does is she grabs the baby and goes up to the to the baby's room, and they lock the doors and stuff. But then that's when the daughter ends up coming in. Um, I think the daughter had knocked out the dad prior to that, right? Or something like that? I don't know what she did. I don't remember what she did with that. Because like, he's out of the house. I think he goes and sees Judd. So she goes out and she, she kills uh, the mom because, uh, you know, the dad is over there checking out on Judd. Judd's dead. Yeah. And um, She throws know. the baby out the window. Yeah, she throws the baby out the window before, uh, and the dad catches the baby because yeah. uh, they wanted to make sure that the baby was yeah. safe and everything. Um, but then after that, we end up seeing the fact that, um, of course, uh, the little girl kills the mom, yeah. and the mom he she goes she says something, and the mom goes, "You're not my daughter, and you never were." And then that's when she like really kills her. Yeah, he goes and does a turn in. Yeah, Lou runs up and he goes. He tries to save her because he is a doctor and he can actually save her and stuff like that. So yeah. he tries to save her, and the mom's last words are, "Don't let her bury me in that place." Yeah. Because she doesn't want to come back as one of those things. And that's which, when the daughter knocks him out. Which the daughter knocks him out and ends up carrying the mom all the way to the pet cemetery. And we get our final confrontation between the dad and the daughter. Which, when they're at the they're at the, they're at the actual pet cemetery before they go beyond the barrier. Yeah. And it, it's one of the most, I think, well put together shots. Because in that shot, we do see the pet cemetery. But it's filled with fog. And it's got that creepy vibe to it. Yeah. Where you're like, you can't even see like your own hand or something like that. Yeah. So I think it has one of the best. That's one of the, also one of the best shots in the movie. Yeah. It had a lot of good moments this movie. Um but that's when we see the final confrontation and of course, you know, the dad they put up the girl puts up a good fight. She's strong. Little. Oh yeah, the dad's putting up the fight too. Though. Yeah, the dad's putting up the fight, but then it ends up with the dad on top of her. He's about to stab her and stuff like that. Yeah. But he took too long and that's when the mom, you do find out she does come back. Yeah, as, does, uh, puts the smack down. Puts the smack down and stabs the dad and uh, we should mention prior to that, the dad had put the little boy into the car to keep him safe. Oh, yes. Um, because that does come back full circle at the end of this movie. Yeah. So basically, the end of this movie is uh, the dad ends up getting buried in the in this pet cemetery as well. Yeah. And he comes back, and the family is all... United. United. And they're, they're missing all, one, though. Yeah, they're missing one. And, and uh, what was his instructions? Don't open that door for anyone. Don't open the door for anybody, which the kid does not do. Yeah. It's not... I think because the dad had the keys on him, so then he unlocks the door. Um, which is actually the opening shot of the movie where we do see, of course, Judd's house on fire. Then we do see the house and you see the blood and everything. Yeah. The blood from the car opened up and they, they go inside, but you don't know what's inside. So it's kind of a twist, but you do see, of course, the family. They're walking. Their eyes look creepy. Oh, yeah. Um, like they're possessed by something. And then, uh, you know, they walk towards the car. The dad opens up the car. The last thing you hear is the car alarm and the movie just ends. Yeah. That is one ending where, of course, Stephen King, he kind of fucks you over. Because he has you sucked in all the way until the very end. You think the dad's going to be the hero of this thing. But it turns out that no one is the hero. Everyone actually dies, yeah. comes back in the pet cemetery and stuff like which, that. Uh, which reminds me of this great statistic I heard. Did you know that one in one people die? One in one people? Yeah. What is the point of that? 100% of people die. Obviously. 
<laughs> but um, so that was kind of the pretty much Pet Cemetery in a nutshell. I know we left off a lot of stuff, but uh, we just kind of got the basic stuff into it. Yeah. Uh, final thoughts of the movie. Final thoughts. So I, I'm not a big fan of the ending. Like I like the ending, ending. Like I like the idea of I'm like all coming and then like it ends. Yeah. Up with the car alarm. But I just thought it was so quick. Like they just did all this time setting it up. Like you watch them move. You watch them become the doctor. You watch the first person that black guy die. I mean, yeah, that's, that's something we didn't even mention. The black guy um, in this movie, he actually is a major part of this movie because he is trying to. I would say he's kind of like. <clears throat> I think he's supposed to be someone like death or like God or something like that. I don't know what he's supposed to be. I have no idea who he's supposed but he, to be. But he is good in this because he's trying to warn Lou not to break the barrier. Yeah, basically. Like, because he dies out of nowhere. Like, he gets hit yeah. by a car. Like, he gets hit by a hit, car. Like, he, really not. And he tries to save his life. He really does. He, yeah. he, like, really was trying. And he comes back and tells him, like, like I, I forgive you for not saving my life. And you tried and stuff like that. And I, yeah. I do forgive you. He goes... But you gotta stop the barrier between the living and the dead because yeah. if that come if that barrier is broken, you're screwed. Yeah. Which uh, we do kind of see that. Yeah. But um, yeah, and I do agree. Like this movie's ending was like, well, we walked out there. I was like, what the fuck was that? Yeah, like it was it was good. Like once again, captivating Stephen King, keep you on the edge of your seat. Yeah. Obviously, my face was in my shirt most of the movie. Yeah. Um, but the ending, it was just like. I, I because because a trailer gives you like she's going to die and obviously we know that one of the kids was going to die because yeah. if you're familiar at all with Pet Cemetery even though we didn't see the movie we knew one of the kids was dying yeah um, and we knew it was a girl because the trailer basically shows it yeah but and so like they did all like just hour and sub minutes just setting it up and then you get like fifteen minutes of basically her being demonic I mean yeah. maybe it's a little bit more but yeah. It's just like, I wanted so much more. Yeah. Because I, I would have loved to watch more of those family interactions. Because they were really funny. Yeah. So that's why I think a, a sequel can come in the works. But I don't think he ever made a Pet Cemetery 2 book. So it's like, if so they like make it. a sequel, it's just whatever they want to do. You know what I mean? So, But yeah. it would be cool to see his, like... What they come, did after. What they did after. A new family moves in or something like that. Or, yeah, a new family moves in. Or, like, how the hell do you kill them? Yeah, that'd be the next thing. Which I think there is a way to kill them. I would say just chop off their heads. That's an obvious. Yeah. Or something. Burn the body or whatever. You know? Burn the bodies. Yeah, so I, I you know, I, I enjoyed the... should have went for the head. <laughs> I, I enjoyed the movie. Uh, it was good. Um, of course, not my favorite horror movie, but it, it was good. It got a lot of backlash from critics and audiences. And a lot of the uh, reviews were like, I didn't get scared. It's like, Which I don't understand because not all horror movies have to scare you. They're mo they could be thrillers or you know yeah. stuff like that. So they don't have to scare you. Remember that audience. Not all horror movies have to scare you. Even though it has the word horror in it, it could just be a good thriller that just makes you go, oh shit. Yeah. You know? That I think that's what I think that's what us did to us. Yeah, that because that was considered a horror movie, but it was one of those horror movies where you were just like, instead of really getting scared, you were just like, what the hell? It makes you think. Yeah. And, and I think that's what the job of a horror movie is. I mean, which, that's the job of most films. It's films. actually known as psychological horror. Yeah. Which, it makes you, if a movie makes you think about it after the end, or just gives you second thoughts about things, that's what I think a job of a horror movie like this is. Yeah, like, it makes you think of, like, obviously, I, I don't really believe in reincarnation too much. But there is satanic stuff in real, in a real life world. Where yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying. Um, and then it also like even like the us. I mean, we didn't really talk about this, but the idea of like there is the, the ideas of cloning and doppelgangers. Yeah. Because like one in seven people look like you in the world. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. So it's it's insane. But yeah. that is gonna do it, of course, for the Minus Four podcast this time. Promise. <laughs> Uh, thank you for tuning in. I don't know what we'll talk about next week. Maybe La Llorona? Ooh, maybe the Curse of La Llorona. We'll talk about a little Curse of La Llorona next week. We got uh, tickets to go see it, of course, Thursday night. Um, Dolby. Dolby. Even scarier. I know, I'm going to be... You're, like, you're, you're, you're not really looking forward to this one, huh? No, 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 to be honest, I know I know we just said we're going to end the podcast, but I'm just going to put my mind out there real quick on this one. Um... No, I'm not looking forward to it. The trailers, I feel like... I mean, if those are all the jump scares, then I'd be fine. But I feel like there's going to have to be at least another ten more. Hoping this is the ultimate twist and it's actually part of the Conjuring universe. That'd be good. Oh, yeah. Uh, if the nun comes out in there, like, watch me walk out of the theater. Oh, there is one more thing I do want to talk about before we actually leave. Um, Horror Made Here is not coming back this year. Oh, yes! I totally forgot about that. Which is 
so disheartening for me. Yeah. Because I really I wanted to do the three peat. I wanted to do the Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, Scary Hall Farm. Scary Farm. Yeah. Um, and Horror Made Here. And I actually was really looking forward to Horror Made Here. Yeah. Because I watched the videos last year and I was like, man, I really wish I would have worked up the courage to go to that. Yeah. Um, because fun. like all, don't get me wrong, Scary Farm and Haunt or um, Horror Nights look great. Yeah. But Horror Made Here just looked so interactive. I love the interactiveness that it was. That I was really looking forward to it. Even though, even if they brought back the same whatever they did last year yeah. and did it again. No, I, I mean, they got so much content that they can do. Like, they could have done a Shining thing. They could have done a Supernatural thing. They could have yeah. done, like, a La Rona thing. They could have done um, another Batman. Because there's so many things from Batman they could do. Yeah. Um, they still could have kept the Freddy vs. Jason, Jason. Yeah, yeah. Or they could have just done a Jason or just a Freddy. You know, I mean, yeah. they could have done so much. And when I got the email saying that they weren't going to be participating in the haunt season this year, but they probably, I don't know if they said they're going to come back next year or not, but. This is they're doing like a tram thing though, right? So yeah, they said later on in the year they're going to announce something for their, uh, uh, for their studio tour, which I hope it's Halloween related. So if that's true, then I, I, I think we'll definitely probably have to do that then. Yeah, but well, that was really looking forward to Very disappointed. Yeah, Horror Made here was so fun. It was actually my favorite event last year. Yeah, I know um, you were telling me that. And I, I'm so disappointed about that, but it is what it is. But, yeah, so that's going to do it for the Mindless Horror Podcast. Um, thank you for tuning in every single week and listening to us ramble about horror. Um, yeah. That's why I made this podcast, so we can just ramble about horror. But uh, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, please be sure to subscribe, uh, like the video, leave some comments. Some what comments. you guys thought about uh, Pet Cemetery? Yeah, whatever you guys thought about Pet Cemetery. If you guys want to have us talk about anything, let us know. By the way, almost 300 subscribers help us get there. Yeah. Hit us up. Hit us up on social media at Knights of Horror for Twitter and at the Knights of Horror for Instagram. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching, and we will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.